Um, tonight, we're looking at the fourth article on the um, 69th, 89 Baptist Confession of Faith, which speaks of creation. And uh, they believe that was an important enough teaching to put into that confession of faith. But what, what I want to do firstly is read Genesis 1. And so if you've got um, your Bibles in front of you, um, please do. The very first page on our Bible, Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to read the whole chapter to us. And it's good to be reminded of what the Bible says about creation. And so verse 1 reads, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. The darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. And let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded <coughs> according to their kind. And every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to, to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw 
that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the, on the earth. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the field of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Amen. So, um, what I want to do is just look at some of those um, verses in Genesis 1 and remind ourselves of uh, God's great creative, creative work. It says in um, Genesis 1 verse 1, in the beginning um, God created the heaven and the earth. First point I'd like to make is that creation, an obvious point, is creation is the work of God. And uh, God is the theme of Genesis 1. Have you ever looked up how many times the name or word God is used in Genesis 1? You'll find in 31 verses, God, God is mentioned 32 times. Uh, 10 times, Genesis 1 uses the words God said. So to bring creation into being, uh, uh, from God's word here, it's God who says, says words, and he brings his creation into being. And we're going right through those verses there where it talks about uh, the, um, the heavens and the earth, the sea, the dry land, uh, the animals, uh, the sea creatures, uh, man himself and the, the the fruits of the trees and the grass and all the seeds god's work in in, in genesis one is um is described to us down these verses in this chapter he says god says the verse three let there be light even though it wasn't until the fourth day that he created the sun and the moon and other various act creatures of acts of god verses nine and ten Again, it says, God said, let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 10, God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters he called seas. God said, verse 11, let the earth bring forth grass. Verse 20, God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. Verse 24, God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth according to its kind. And it was so. Verse 25, God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. God's design here for creation is laid out in detail for us to understand. So creation is unquestionably, undoubtedly, and undeniably God's work. There was a man called Walter Brueggemann, and he's an American, but he writes 
a, a lot on the scriptures and he's written a book on creation and it, uh, on creation he, he puts a, a three word a heading and he says when he's speaking of creation and particularly Genesis he says the creator creates creation that is his comment on on the creation itself the creator God creates creation and that's what we have here in these opening verses of um, Genesis. But unlike any other human creator, or any other creator, if, if there be one, uh, there isn't really, the creator who is God, when he creates, he starts with nothing. And he creates all that exists around us out of nothing. That's our amazing God, isn't it? That is the creator at work he uses nothing out of nothing is the is the apparently is the latin words in verse two just to bring that out a little bit what starts as a mass of unformed material covered with water darkness was upon the face of the deep and in just six days is transformed into the beauty of the world that is around us so creation, as verse 1 tells us, is the work of God. It didn't just happen. It's not the result of evolution of millions of years. God did it all in six days, according to the verses of Scripture here. According to um, this, the last verse of, of chapter 1, it says that... Um, the evening and the morning were the sixth day, the seventh day, God rested in chapter two. But um, second point I'd make is, similar to the first one, creation is the work of God. Secondly, creation is the work that each person of the Trinity was involved in. Now, we looked at that the other week, but I'm going to go over it again because it's the work of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Um, now, in the beginning there, it's in verse 1 of what we've just read. It says God created the heavens and the earth. But the, 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 the word for, for God there is Elohim, which means more than one. And um, so that fits very well in with what scripture teaches us that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit were involved in the creation of the world, the creation of the universe, of everything. God the Father it says of him in 1 Corinthians 8 verse 6, there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live says of God the Son in respect of creation, for by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. That's Colossians 1.16. God the Holy Spirit, it says uh, in Genesis 1.2, the the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So it's a work of the triune of the Trinitarian God creation. So creation is the work of God. Creation is a work that each person of the Trinity was involved in. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And creation was created, scripture tells us, to display God's glory. Now you read about that in Psalm 19, verse 1. David says, the heavens declare the glory of God. In other words, creation glorifies God. And uh, so its creation is, is a display of God's glory. The glory of God 
you know, it's a, it's a question. It's a, it's a thing that's always mentioned in scripture, the glory of God. We say things like, for the glory of God. It depends on the context. But what is the glory of God? When we come down to a definition, what would we give uh, as the best definition of that term? The glory of God. I, I believe is, is this. The glory of God is himself. The glory of God is himself. Is his character. It's who he is. You see, he delights in himself. God delights in his character, in who he is. For you and me, that would be wrong for us to say of ourselves because we're sinful. And there's no delight or glory in being sinful, is there? But the whole creation points to the glorious character of God himself. Verse 20, it says that, of chapter 1, it says, Then God saw that everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. How can God say that of what he has made? You, you know, and I think the reason is this, because God delights in himself. That's why he's able to say what he has made, what he has created is very good. He delights in his own works. He delights in what he has made and what he has created. And in himself, God is unchangeably perfect holy and righteous so therefore he is quite right to glory in himself it's a big turn off to us isn't it when we see somebody from the football world or the um, the tv world or film stars and they're full of their own selves full of their own you know glory i'm it kind of a thing it's a big turn off when we see that in a human being, whoever they are, but not for God. God is glorious in his person. And God is worthy to be glorified by his creation because he is God and there's no one greater than him. You know, Romans 1.20 talks about this because it says, Paul talking to the church at Rome, in 120 he says there, uh, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, speaking of the unbelievers, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four footed animals and creeping things. See, the foolishness of man. He doesn't want to bring glory to God. He suppresses the knowledge of God that he's received. He pushes it away. He pushes it out of his life. And he'll believe anything else that comes his way. He'll even worship um, idols and images made of, of created beings. He worships them rather than give glory and worship the God who made everything. What a great sin that is. Fourthly, creation preaches that God is. Creation itself preaches, talks about in, in um, Psalm 19, there, speech has gone out. Creation has a voice. It's not an audible voice, but it's, it, it's, it's preaching, if you like, by its appearance. It's saying something like, God made me. And... Because in Romans 1.20, in creation, his attributes are said to be clearly seen. How do we understand this? 
Well, it says, it gives the answer in the verse, by the things that are made, right? Crea creation is the work of God, speaks of God, and it's clearly seen by the things that are made. How they came into being, there is a power revealed in creation. Is there not? There's amazing power in our world today, in, 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 in the world itself and how it works in, its, in the planet and what happens. Just, just think of the, the power that was on display in the flood, Noah's flood, when God flooded the earth with judgment, with water. The whole of the earth was covered in water. The highest mountain was covered by the flood. The tremendous power that was used to do that to the earth. Well, the tsunami we had a few years ago, 2003, I think it was, the, the, um, the unbelievable forces that were displayed when that tsunami happened in, in, in the Far East there. It's quite frightening, really, was it, when you, you saw those things on the television, the power and the destructive power that was displayed there. As I said, sinful man suppresses the truth of God's word when he sees in creation. It, creation is telling him there is a creator. And yet he suppresses it, pushes it away, will not have it. He rejects God and won't give him the glory. And he'd sooner give it to something in far inferior and ridiculous, really, like birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. One commentator said this, people cannot say that God has not made it clear to them that he exists. To deny this is the height of stupidity, one commentator put. And he quoted, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, Psalm 14, verse 1. It's foolish to deny that there is a creator God. And yet we live in a society, don't we? And in a world where we, it seems like the majority of people don't believe in, in, in the true God and rather believe evolution than they do creation. That's the, the world in which we're in today. It's more of a moral problem, isn't it? I believe today, um, because when men are confronted with God and where they stand before him, and when they're told they have to turn from their sins and follow, Christ, follow God, follow Christ, then they love their sins more than they love God. And they continue to uh, live in their sins and in their beliefs, such as atheism. And evolution it's a moral problem that we face today when we're talking about atheism and evolution fifthly we learn this i believe from genesis 1 that man is the apex of god's creation verses 26 and 27 and it says there then god said let us make man notice there it's let us not I will make man. Let us there is the, the, the teaching that God is one and yet he is three. Let us make man in our image, not in my image, in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. When he created Adam and Eve in his own image, he forever separated the human race from the animals around us. You can do all the DNA tests in the world and the conclusion will stand. 
our genetic code may be similar to the chimpanzee or the koala bear, but we are not like them and they are not like us. We are not just one of the animals, as some say, or the product of eons of evolution. We were created by the hand of God. And unlike all of the creatures, we alone were given the capacity to know him and to love him and to serve him. God hasn't finished, you know, with his creation. Um, the Bible says that God is going to make a new heavens and a new earth. This earth has been marred and ruined by Satan and by sin. But there's coming a judgment day and Satan will be finally judged. And all those who followed him will be eternally judged. But God is going to create a new heavens and a new earth. That is promise, 2 Peter 3.13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. That's our future still in creation. It's going to be a new creation, a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. No more sin, no more curse, no more dying, no more funerals, no more suffering in the new creation. That is, a, that is for the believer, that is our destiny. That is where we're going when, we leave, when, when God finishes his plan for this world and changes it into a new heavens and a new earth. So, you know, creation is a wonderful thing, is it not? To understand, as we ha have done with, by becoming believers, that God made everything by the word of his mouth, brought everything into being. The wonderful beauty and the design that is all around us shows us that there is a God, that there's a living God with whom we have to do. And um, God is, is, uh, wants us to fulfill our God-given purpose, and that is to glorify him. We'll never be happy glorifying ourselves. That's what sinful men do. But for us, our true happiness is found in bringing glory to our great and wonderful triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let all the glory be to him. Amen.